I guess when I came here, people actually did tell me I was going to do better. People told me there was hope for me. I'm a lot better with my mom. I'm talking to my dad again, and it's better. I finally started working on myself, you know, trying to start forgiving myself for the things I've done to people. I'm trying to forgive other people for what they've done to me. Since I've come to House the Hope, like, I've been delivered from, you know, the fear and the harm and the sex and the drugs and, you know, wonder if I'm pregnant and, you know, if I'm going to overdose or if I'm going to die. It's freed me from, like, all the fear. My grades were horrible, but now that I'm here, like, I'm doing so good in school. This place gave me, like, a second chance of becoming somebody and having an education. I have, like, straight A's and B's here. And back home, I, I didn't even have grades. I've caught up. I'm like halfway through 11th grade now. So when I go back, I'll be in my senior year with my friends. My favorite verse talks about how meditating on God's word will help you not sin against him. I live within the shadow of the Almighty, sheltered by the God who is above all gods. No temptation that sees you except what's common to man of God is faithful. He not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Only God can save me, so I'll calmly wait for him. This I declare that he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. This God thing's serious, you know, this is no joke. I always thought it was a fake. And when I finally caught a glimpse of God, He showed me who He was, and He made, He showed me something that I'll never forget. I'm making progress, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting healed, you know, I'm getting delivered from some things. Their counseling program here, um, all the parents are involved. You can't just drop your child off and let them deal with the issues. I thought it would be all about him. It's not all about him. It's about our whole family. At first I kind of thought, well, Anthony's going to get the help he needs, but it's not all about that because as a parent, I also learned how to deal with Anthony. I've gone to church my whole life, but I didn't really care about God until I got here. I became saved and then I became a born-again virgin. You have like forgiveness for all your sins. I guess my new purpose is God now. I see more in it. Before I was here, I always knew I wanted to do better. I always knew about God, but I always kind of put him out there outside the window just looking in. And now that I got him in my life, I think I'm going to do better with him. I also hope it's a great place for me to turn my life around. This place has changed my life. And I know that when I leave here, I'll be a stronger person. You know, obviously God has a plan for me. If he spared my life all those nights that I was drinking and driving, and. You know, I never OD'd, I never got alcohol poisoning, and I never got a STD. She just had a birthday two days ago, and the card that I wrote her, I just said, I hope that your 17th year is um, a year of great joy. House of Hope is exactly that hope. And um, before we got here, we didn't have any. We're back at Let's Talk About It with Judy, and we are coming to you from Cafe Tobago in Davie, right in the Atrium Center on the corner of University and Griffin Road. And we're going to wrap up our show today talking about some of the solutions to the issues that the teens are having. And we were talking with Reverend Marcellus and with Philip about just some of the ways that the church and parents and the teens themselves can help themselves. Let's start with you, Philip. Well, um, as far as the church is concerned, I believe the church in a, as a whole needs to do a whole revamp. Um, we've, we've, divided our, we've divided ourselves into ministries trying to be specific and trying to uh, address certain things and that's good. We, I mean we, we do need to address certain issues but as a whole I think we need to first create that unity. I think we need to stop dividing our children from their parents, stop dividing uh, our youth from their parents and start uh, creating a, a true house within the, within the church so that, the, yeah. so that when they do go into their homes they know what to do. They know how to model that out. Um, the church also needs to be willing to address the teens as far as discipline-wise. Um, mm -hmm. We are, t we, I mean, in, only in America does the <laughs> word teenager exist. Everywhere in the world, by the time you hit around 13, you're a man or, or, or a woman. Um, we, we've, we've put them in the, a whole class of, of like an, an adolescence or next childhood and we're not disciplining them. We're not showing them how they need to walk. We don't, we're not showing them how they need to live. And that's been a problem in my own life. That's been a problem in the lives of many teens I see. And the ch if the church is going to have teens that are going to affect this world, the way the world is going to know that the church is here is that when, it's, when they see their teens acting differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look in the book of Daniel, Daniel and his friends were totally different than totally the teens uh, 
from the from the city from the cities of Babylon, and that's that's what brought them out before Nebuchadnezzar, and they and they succeeded, and they they were very wise before him, and we need to raise up teams that are like that. We need to be a, the churches need to concentrate on making our teams know the word of the Lord, ma the, making our teens uh, discipline themselves, and show them how to walk out as adults. And the parents. With the parents, um, first of all, they have to acknowledge that there's an issue yes. that these kids are facing because they're in denial, as you and I were discussing. And also, the kids cannot come to them and share with them. The, the teens are afraid of their parents because they're afraid that when they open up and they're honest, they're going to be consequenced for the, right. their honesty. Th that's so true. And then the parents themselves are a little bit reserved about sharing on certain topics because, number one, they're either not, their life is not lining up mm -hmm. um, with the Word of God the way that it should be. Or number two, they're just uneducated about it. They don't know how to go about sitting down and having a conversation right. with their child without arguing and screaming over a topic. So um, the parents themselves need some counseling. They need counseling. Training. They need training. You know, we, we have the Word of God that teaches us everything. I tell right. people all the time, God is the perfect model of a parent. Right. He's he a is. disciplinarian. He's a lover. He has a balance in how he deals with us right. as his children. And we as parents have to model that um, to our children, model God's love, because they separate themselves from God because we are the only example that they have of God. You know what I also think is really important, and I did this with my children, and I'm not saying I'm a perfect parent because I don't mm -hmm. think there's any such thing, but what I did with my kids is I was very honest about my life. I was very honest about the mistakes I've made. I was not afraid to say, listen, I did this, it was wrong, I went down this path, it didn't work. And I think that's something that parents are afraid to be human mm -hmm. in front of their children. They're so afraid to have their children know that they're human beings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that indeed they do make these mistakes. But, mm -hmm. you know, as we come towards the end of our show today, I want to talk about this Teens Walk for Teens Walkathon, which yeah. you're having on Saturday, January 3rd. Tell me about this walk. Well, we're inviting everyone to come out for the Teens Walk. The idea of this walk is for it to be an awareness campaign of the issues that teenagers are facing. So we're going to have teens across Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade creatively expressing the issues that they're facing through drama, through dance, wow. through song, through rapping. So we're going to walk the first part of the day to help to raise money for our ministry that reaches out to hurting teens. And then we're going to use it as a tool to reach out to the community, reach out to our young people for them to express so the parents can hear their voices and as well for the teens to give each other solutions to the issues that they're facing wow, and encourage each brilliant. other. Thank you. Tell our viewers exactly where that walk is going to be okay. and give them all the details on how they can get in touch with you. Okay, perfect. Um, we invite you to come and join us for our walk. It will be on Saturday, January 3rd, 2009. We're going to start the year off right at Central Park in Plantation, Florida. Please visit us on our website at www.hopesouthfl.org. You can register there online. All the forms that you need, everything that you need to access is right there. If you need to contact us by phone, please call us at 954-966-3217. And we hope to see you out there. We'll be there. We'll definitely be there. Thank I have you. a ministry bias for a theater company, as you know, yeah. and my teens will be there as well. And the staff of Let's Talk About It will also be there walking and we'll be there interviewing people and just catching the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching Let's Talk About It with Judy, filmed on location at Cafe Tobago in Davie on the corner of University and Griffin. We hope you'll be back with us next week when we'll have another exciting topic to discuss. Come on, let's talk about it.